Welcome to the Building Your Career podcast. I'm your host, Don Tarjanskis, and join us as we explore the world of construction. Each episode, we welcome a guest that shares career highlights and career advice, and hopefully inspires the next generation of construction professionals. Welcome to another edition of the Building Your Career podcast. Today, I'm joined by Ray Moyler, who's the Quality Assurance Specialist at the Skills Centre. Very excited, um, and someone who has recommended to come on the podcast has got a very interesting background, very interesting journey to he is now, um, and someone who's also been on the tools as well. So, Ray, I suppose we'll start off where we always start off. Could you tell us a little bit more about your current job role and also a little bit more about, you know, kind of what you do with the Skills Centre as well? Yeah, so I um, I work in quality at Skills Centre, which means that I work across their divisions to support with apprenticeships, to support with MPQs they deliver, and to generally just support the tutors and assessors in delivering to the best of their ability using all of the experience that I've had so far in my career and just kind of throwing out and saying, this is how we look after our learners better. Um, the Skills Centre also does a level one pre-employment, which allows people to walk into any of our centres off of the street, essentially sign themselves up for a course and uh, complete a course, which they will end up with a green CSCS card, which is essentially their passport into construction and um, the kind of starting point for their career. Uh, which is really great to kind of be a part of that part. And uh, we work in schools and across the community and also in future skills. So seeing where technology is developing and, and what government agenda is changing. And so what skills will be needed for those sectors and kind of staying ahead of it and getting people skilled up so that they can have those jobs in the future ready for them. That's awesome. And I'm a really big uh, fan of the Skills Centre and and what the company is doing as well. But I just wanted to see if there was any particular success stories or any particular standout stories of people that you've personally helped, you know, kind of get a career in construction and kind of either where they're at now or or their their journey into the industry. To the industry. It's always great doing the MQs. Um, even though you're not only with a learner for quite a short amount of time, so normally between like three to seven months, but when you bump into them on other construction sites that you go to, or you bump into them on the street, and they're just they're like, I'm doing this now, I'm you know I'm a supervisor now, or I've uh, you know I've got this pay rise, and and they're just like like so grateful um, because getting a CSCS card it allows you to to, uh, to have career stability job security to go for that pay rise um, and just generally just supporting you in your well-being and and for your family and that's always just kind of thrown across and it's wonderful Um, for me personally my favorite um, success stories were the women that I worked with so when I was a tutor for apprentices I was um, was delivering the formwork program and to meet these women coming in who really want to do a job but don't really know what form work is and it's a bit of a shock when you first come in because it's an outdoor trade so you're dealing with the elements it's very hard and heavy work um but three of these women were the first in the country to um to complete a form work apprenticeship program on the new standard um and that's just it's just absolutely amazing uh, especially for me to be a part of that as well because i'm just i'm a firm believer in, in women sitting there getting their, their foot in the door and making their place in construction. So, yeah, and, and now they're going out and they're mentoring our current apprentices. Um, so current apprentices are on site for a lot of these women and a lot of our past apprentices. And they're like, look, I've been through it. I know what we're doing. Come here. I'm going to help you get your videos. I'm going to help you get access to the right work. And it's that, that mentoring that the industry really needs um, to support people coming through training. Yeah, I think that's a really common theme is that, you know, a lot of the people, even at director level, that they always have someone that they can remember really well as being that kind of go-to mentor or someone that was there from the, from the beginning. So, yeah, you know, just wanted to let all our listeners know, reach out to people because there are people that want to help, such as yourself, Ray. But, um, I mean, for you on your, your kind of personal journey then, where did it all kind of start for you? Where did where did your kind of passion start for the construction industry then? I, um, I never intended on getting into construction. It wasn't 
It wasn't something that I thought was going to be my life. In fact, where I am now, I never picked it. <laughs> it's just the way how opportunity and, <laughs> and it comes all together. But um, yes, yeah, so I did a writing school. Um, I got my GCSEs, I got my A-levels, I, I set off to university. And then after being there for 10 weeks, I realised this is not the career for me. And so I dropped out, not quite knowing what I was going to do, and started working for a neighbour who was a cabinet fitter. And um, so he taught me some skills and I was really getting into it. And he encouraged me to go off to college and, and to get qualified in it. So I signed myself up for a level one course, really started enjoying it. Um, I was I was put in competitions. I was um, I, I achieved like the uh, I got like a distinction um, through my apprenticeship when I was when I was doing it. Um, because I just, I just really got into it and kind of like supporting my classmates as well, who kind of felt that the academic side was too challenging for them. Mm -hmm. um, but for doing that, that's actually really supported me in being a teacher and being a tutor for the apprentices later on in life. So it all kind of goes together. That's that's the beauty of life. <laughs> um, so, yeah, after I qualified as an apprentice, then I was out in the working world, which is extremely daunting. Um, you don't have that that security blanket of being an apprentice anymore. You actually have to know what you're doing. <laughs> and it's terrifying because every day is a learning day and every site you go to, they've got they've got different tools, they've got different requirements, different specifications, different materials. And so you're constantly learning, constantly messing up and learning from that too. <laughs> um and so I moved from site carpentry into form work uh, because there was just so much more work available there. Um, and that is more of an outdoor trade. Um, so it's carpentry and it's in its rougher side. It's it's essentially creating boxes for concrete to be poured into. And these boxes are what make up the building. Um, and then one cold winter when the layoffs were all coming, I was throwing out CVs to anyone who had taken. And one of those was a um, uh, an, an agency in New Zealand. They said, we need carpenters. And I was like, all right, threw an outdated CV at them, carried on my day. Three months later, they gave me a call and said, so when are you coming over? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> this <laughs> is happening. So, yeah. Um, I'd completely forgotten all about it. So it was a bit of a shocking call. But uh, so, yeah, I, I found myself in Christchurch in New Zealand, um, helping to rebuild the city after the earthquake. Um, I did a couple of years over there. And... I found it really, really interesting because there isn't the tension of the uh, the building sites in London, mm -hmm. um, just just much more of an easygoing culture, um, and the amount of women on site was incredible. Uh, like construction in London, there's there's less than three percent. There's about three percent women in construction. On the tools, like working with tools every day, it's got to be less than one percent. Over in Christchurch, where I was working, it was about ten percent. And it, that was a game changer for me because I realized how working as a woman in construction, you could just be a construction worker. It wasn't, there wasn't like this woman hat on you as well. Um, and and I learned a lot from the way that that people were with each other. Mm -hmm. um, it taught me a lot about, about how we can be very much more civilized in the way we treat each other in construction because it does tend to be quite a shouty kind of place and uh yeah tensions get high a lot and it's always the stress of the concrete's coming but um yeah it was um much more chilled vibe there so when I came back to London I got back into the form work and then uh the skill center uh took me on as a MVQ assessor so then I started applying the knowledge that I had of um, of carpentry, of construction generally, and then going out and seeing guys on site and assessing their competence and making sure that they knew their jobs so that they could then get their blue card. Um, and then from there, I was given a role as a form work apprentice tutor. Mm -hmm. I did that. And then now I'm in, in the quality role where I'm working with the apprenticeships, the MVQs, and across the board to kind of support quality throughout the company. Wow. Are you a job seeker, tired of endlessly scrolling through job boards with no success? Has your job search hit a dead end? Well, we're here to tell you there's another way. Here at Quest Personnel, we offer a variety of free resources to help job seekers just like you. 
Our team of expert recruiters is here to help you through every step of the job search process, from CV writing to interview techniques. But that's not all. We also offer exclusive access to workshops, networking events, and other job roles that you simply won't find anywhere else. So what are you waiting for? Get in touch now on our website, questpersonnel.co.uk. Wow, absolutely incredible journey. And I just wanted to kind of pick on one point as well, particularly with, you know, kind of working in New Zealand and the, yeah. uh, the difference between the women in construction. Women in was, construction. Was, was it promoted more in New promoted. Zealand or what, what, what was the difference in terms of how they promoted the they construction promoted industry, industry over there to have more women in the industry? Did you, did you pick up on, it, on anything whilst you were over there? Um, I found it was just more of an open door kind of thing, like the culture generally, um, there wasn't such a divide between men and women. There, there wasn't okay. um, an assumption that a woman couldn't do it. Like the women out there are just, they're just so hardy. Um, <laughs> you know, like everyone, we said that every, um, like all Kiwis are born knowing how to run in flip flops and back up a trailer and that's the women included in it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think yeah, the, the culture of that allowed for more women to come into the field, but also it was a it, it was a skill shortage. Sorry, mm -hmm. skills shortage. So it's the same as London is facing now. They could no longer afford to be fussy about who they're hiring. Okay. They just needed everybody to come in, and so of course everybody came in, and that included the women flocking in from more different countries, and um, to, to get work then. Okay, brilliant. So. If you could kind of turn back the hands of time and knowing everything you know now, if you could give yourself one piece of advice when you first started off in the industry, what advice would you would you give your younger self? That your name is everything. I didn't realise with construction how much it's about who you know. Mm -hmm. When I first came in, it was so hard to get a job because they weren't really advertising um, it, it wasn't like a another career where you you'd go on a, a job search website and find a job. It was it was really about calling up your last manager or your last supervisor and say, "Have you got any work going?" You know, mm -hmm. so every piece of work that you do, whether you see it as relevant or not, that's your name that you've left on it. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I walk away from a job, I want to know that whoever walks past that isn't thinking, "Oh, that's a bit dodge." <laughs> They're thinking. <laughs> That's a pretty good piece of work. And then when they ask who did it and they say it's Ray, then I'm like, I'm proud of my work. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, well, it is it's all it's about um, building up those connections, up those connections and, and whether you like it or not, every job you go to is a little bit of a networking event as well, where you're building mm -hmm. up personal relationships with people. People are looking at the quality of your craftsmanship and your work as well. And it well, is just, you know, having that circle of people that you do know that might be able to get you the job not next week not six months but maybe a year or two years time so yeah. it is one of those things and you know kind of going back to some of the advice that people give is just just ask the questions just ask the questions when just you're on the, the, the building site and have that inquisitive have mindset that inquisitive because it, it might not lead to something tomorrow but it's always going to lead to building up those connections for the future so yeah it's a um yeah. really good good piece of really advice there so for you i know obviously you you um your own personal uh, journey, the, the kind of education route and education university just route wasn't for you at all. So for other so people that maybe feel as though they're in your shoes that know that the university that is the not university. the right route for them, or they just simply don't want to go down that route. What, what are the different career paths available to get into the construction industry when people are first starting out then? Well, that's the beauty of construction is that it's, it's huge. Um, there's just so many different career paths within it, and you could you could get trained up in 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 quality or quantity surveying or engineering or whatever, and then and then go off to something else through that. Um, there's so many soft skills involved in the work that we do that are applicable everywhere. You know, so even if you started on a career path and you realise that it's not for you transfer an income to construction wouldn't be a big deal because there's a place for everyone within it um for someone who's just starting out say at that 18 year old type of age and not really sure what to do then getting into some taster courses is definitely mm -hmm. a good way to go um there's seems to be a lot of plugging into the the academic roles within construction of saying well if you're capable then go into go into be an architect or an engineer or 
for a project manager or whatever but I think that the trades need more people who who, who have who have an ability to really work with numbers and who can process things quickly and and can not just follow instructions but think of better ways to do things you know um so definitely getting into a um, a short course where you can try out some manual skills because you might well find that there's something that really appeals to you uh, as did i um there's there's something really honest about coming home from work from a hard day's work and you're tired and your muscles are aching <laughs> and you're covered in all sorts of dirt and it's probably rained on you all day too and you sit down in the chair and you think i really earned my money today <laughs> yeah and it's something that I quite miss now, uh, being in in quite a mentally wearing role, is that when you do a manual trade, you hang up your tools, you get changed out your PPE, you go home, and that's the day done. It's it doesn't seem to wear on you so mentally um, because you just you just go back to it another day. There's no nothing to be really thinking about and planning out for the, the next day and the weeks ahead. It seems like a much less stressful job. Um, and that could be really appealing to some people. There's all sorts of characters on construction sites, and you'll always find your place within it. <laughs> Definitely, I've, 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 even on this podcast that you can see the diversity of people and characters and different routes in as well. So it's good for you to kind of reiterate that there is those kind of different paths available for people. But knowing that what you kind of know about the uk construction industry and also the new zealand construction industry as well what 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 can the industry do better to promote the the kind of construction industry to the either the younger generation and also women as well because i think that's just as important and something that was quite relevant to this episode as well so so what can the industry do to to kind of promote the industry to to, to women and the younger generation, generation to retain and also to, to nurture that talent as well I think to to change the image of construction is the most important thing to start with. Um, a lot of people who don't have any experience in construction or aren't close to someone who works in that kind of role, they won't really understand what a site is like. I always say that it's a hidden world construction because you walk past these building sites, they've got the hoarding up, the big fences. You can't see inside. You have no idea what's going on in there. It's like an invisible world. And so to to go into schools, and to create this idea in young people's heads that they do have a place there. And also, you know, for a lot of people who are, who are coming up in the world, they want to know, is there is there longevity in that job there? Can I, can I progress through my career? Can I come out of school and earn a decent wage? Absolutely, all those things. And without 50 grand's worth of student debt, you know? So it's like there's loads of appealing things. And I think that it isn't just, it's not shared enough. I think... Um, if you if you're doing all right in your grades at school you're not offered manual trades or construction as a as a viable option because it's still assumed um that that's where you go when you didn't go and do well in school but actually it's a place for everybody and that's the beauty of it so i think that what um what employers need to do what companies need to do is really start changing that vision flexible working to um allow more place for women um to to uh to to um bring in mentors uh, to support people i think once you you put someone on a construction site you expect everybody else to teach them but it's not the case they need mm -hmm. to be nurtured through their role no. um so Ray, if I could just so ask you, I like to dispel like some myths and, and just get rid of some preconceived of ideas some that people would have about the construction industry. So is there any is there common any misconceptions common or common themes, or common themes, themes that, that you common find themes out when people are, first come in the industry that they think the it's that they think like it's a certain fun. thing and it, and it just yeah. isn't when they get out there on site? Yeah, I mean, it's that there's, there's preconceptions that it's low paid work. It's not. The beauty of it um, with a lot of a lot of construction sites is you can go on self-employed. Um, and the beauty of that is that you get paid for what you do. So if you're someone who wants to work hard, who is motivated, you'll be paid for that. You can find the company that wants to pay you for that worth the most. And there's a lot of freedom in it. 
Um, it's also with like with my experience of being able to work abroad, it's work across the across the globe. You know, so once you get those qualifications, the world really is your oyster. I've had friends who've gone off to Australia, New Zealand and Canada and going across Europe. And you can just take these qualifications anywhere because everybody's building, you know, um, there's the there's the preconceptions that it's it's for people who, who may not be very smart, um, who who are that it's just, there is just lost my wording here but um it's not just for people who who didn't do well in school mm -hmm. who haven't got other options yeah um this this industry is is thriving now because the people are savvy and they're also applying those those manual skills to their knowledge also perfect well ray you've been an absolutely incredible guest i think there's so many good points so that you've covered points, there. You so I just want to say a massive thank you for coming on. And I really do appreciate really you know, do taking the time out to, to be on the podcast. No worries. All right. Take care, Ray. I'll see you later. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on the Building Your Career podcast. We hope you enjoyed hearing from our guest and learning about the different career paths available. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so we can reach even more listeners. And if anyone wants any free CV advice or simply wants to know the options available to them, don't hesitate to get in touch.